The views and opinions on this show are for entertainment purposes only. The only factual information is any story that has happened to AT2 are the parties involved. Other than that, go ahead and get you a drink, get you something to eat. Just relax and enjoy the show. Let's have fun. All right, y'all, let's get real. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Talk the Real Deal with AT2. And yes, I'm your boy AT2. How everybody doing? How everybody living? How everybody feeling today? Um, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Let me say what's up to the people, of course. Uh, what's up, Jackie? What's up, Denitria? Thank you for holding it down. Shout out to all my mods. Um, but Denitria, you holding it down for everybody right now, I see. Uh, what's up, Angela? What's up, Nelly? What's up, Benita? I love seeing all my members. I love seeing that. Uh, what's up, Super K? How you doing? How everybody doing? Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you already have it. And if you feel it in your heart to donate to the show, go ahead and drop a Super Chat Super Sticker or a Cash App PayPal Venmo. We love all money. We even love pennies. We love, you know, anything that we can put inside the bank account. We love that. We just don't take IO, uh, IOUs. Is that, was that a real thing back in the day? Like IOUs, you could actually do that? Because shit, I need a couple of IOUs because I'm broke until uh when we get paid, y'all Thursday. We get paid on Thursday. So if y'all want to help, if y'all want to give me a loan until Thursday, go ahead. <laughs> uh, what's up, clever girl? What's up, Bernice? I love seeing all my members here. By the way, I was thinking about doing a uh, a streamyard class on um Wednesday. I was actually thinking about doing one on Wednesday. If you want to, StreamYard is a system that I use and how I go live and stuff like that. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested because I'll definitely do a class. I'll do a flyer tonight uh, for you guys. I was working on one last week and then I never got to it. Uh, what's up, Shay? How you doing? Okay, so what's the first story we're going to start out with? Uh, because we got a few. I always say, oh, it's going to be a long show. I'll be done within 30 minutes. You know I'll go quick. I don't be trying to waste y'all time. I get right to the point. Except when I do my intro. That's why you got to be here live. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that uh, all, all. When you hit the notification bell, press all so you get all my notifications so you hear, so you can get a shout out. All right. This is the story I want to start out with first. Let's go ahead and start out with a bang. Now, I know some of y'all probably read the title and like, wait, they hooked up. Well, not in the physical sense. Well, maybe. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so Caitlin and Lamar Odom got them a podcast, y'all. Can you believe that? They got them a podcast, and it's called Keeping Up With Sports. It's a play on the whole Keeping Up With The Kardashian Show. What's up, Miss Bugs? What's up, Couture Bay? Couture Bay, can you believe that? They're using The Kardashian Show to monetize off of that title. It's a play on words, keeping up with sports. This is ridiculous. Now, I will say this. The first interview that they had was with Sugar Ray Leonard, but, and you know, he revealed some stuff, right? So I have to give him credit about getting the interview and stuff like that. However, I just feel like this is their way of trying to get back into the Kardashians good graces because basically these two have been ousted. As you guys know, Lamar was once married to Chloe. They got a divorce. She not took him back, but when he had that overdose, you know, she was there to try to save him and bring him back to life and all that good stuff. And thank God he's still here. And then you Caitlin transitioned, who was originally Bruce Jenner, 
since that whole transition thing, it has not been right. And I'm not saying that Caitlyn isn't allowed to transition. But the thing is, is I don't think Caitlyn realizes the family looks at it as you betrayed them. You were deceptive. Because at the end of the day, those girls, those Kardashians, even though you have a few Jenners in that family, the Kardashians, the Jenners, they're going to pick Chris at the end of the day. Talking about Chris Jenner. They are always going to pick Chris at the end of the day. Now, publicly, they had to come out and be like, oh, we supportive, blah, blah, blah. You know, because if they said that they, if they told y'all the real reason why they didn't like Caitlyn, people would be angry and upset. So they had to come out publicly and support Caitlyn. But they don't rock with Caitlyn. They don't like Caitlyn. Caitlyn done did books, interviews, all that. And you know that family is tight-lipped, you know? They're, like, they have a reality show, but more than likely the reality show is just fake. I mean, it has been reported that a lot of it, a lot of it is just a storyline and it's fake, right? But Caitlyn is filling the secrets and stuff like that, just like Kanye. They love Kanye until Kanye started speaking. And then they was like, oh, we got to get up a body here. And they made sure to tell us that Kanye was crazy. Now, am I saying that Kanye is not crazy? No. But they made sure that we knew that something was wrong with Kanye and that he had all of this going on to discredit all the stuff he was saying about the Kardashians. Remember? Lamar is simply looking for family and acceptance. MB, that is true. I do feel that way. But damn, we can find another family. Like, let that Kardashian stuff go. Like, why are you still trying to be a Kardashian? Just like Caitlyn, you are a Jenner, but you're still trying to be a Kardashian. You should have transitioned into a Kardashian. That's what you should have did. Now, granted, yeah, do they have every right to make their money and how they see fit? Yeah, but we all know that this is a ploy so they can, uh, let's be honest, the only reason why we're talking about their podcast is because they're associated with the Jenners, right? I mean, with the Kardashians. Ooh. See, I got confused. That's the only reason why we care. Gilbert Arenas has his own podcast. Shannon Sharp has his own podcast. Shock, uh, I said Shock, Shaq has his own podcast. You know, there's plenty of people in sports who have their own podcasts or show and stuff like that, right? Plenty of people who have their own show. But you two, the two that are connected to the Kardashians, had to come together and get a podcast? All right. Out of anybody. Y'all two were all like, oh, you know what we should do? Let's do a podcast together. This still is not going to get you a part of the family. No one cares. No one is going to be all like, oh my God, this is the greatest show ever. A lot of people don't like Caitlyn. You know, Lamar, he's still within our graces and stuff like that. But a lot of people don't like Caitlyn. Not at all. They can give a damn about Caitlyn Jenner. They don't care. No one cares about Caitlyn Jenner at the end of the day. Just being honest. But y'all let me know what you think about the podcast, whether or not you guys like it, or will you be listening or watching it? Uh, I won't. <laughs> just honest, I won't. I just think that this is a whole clout chase move, and at this point, y'all got to let that fame that y'all have with the Kardashians go. Build your own. Not together, but build your own. Lamar, find you somebody that loves you. Chloe is never going to... Chloe... It's still going to be chasing after Tristan until she's like 60-something. In her 60s, still chasing after that man, still having babies and all that stuff. She's never going to come back to you, Lamar. You got to let it go. Did y'all watch that Celebrity Big Brother show? Did y'all watch that? Well, on Celebrity Big Brother, he would talk a lot about Chloe and how he did her wrong and how he messed up and stuff like that. I mean, great. We all had a love that we messed up and we wish we could uh, 
uh, go back and make things right. But hell, at this point, when did they get divorced, y'all? Hold on. Let me look that up. Right, Lamar has kids. Exactly, he has a family. He has kids that allegedly he don't support. You know, like the way he put in more effort into trying to get back with Chloe compared to his own kids. Man, oh man. That, I, I don't know what to say, y'all. Uh, when did Chloe and Lamar divorce? In 2016. So it's been about eight years. Eight years and he's still trying to get this. Let it go. Let it go. I mean, thank God it's about sports. So, you know, they shouldn't reference the Kardashians anymore. But I don't know. How, how y'all feel about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got to get over it. Hey, Tasia. What's up, Sarni? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good season of Celebrity Big Brother. But let me ask you guys. Are you guys going to be uh, listening or watching? Because they do have video form, too. Are you guys going to be listening or watching this uh, Lamar and Caitlyn podcast? Keeping up with sports. Are you going to be watching it? Yes or no? Right. And you are right about that, Couture Bay. I just don't think it's going to be on the same level as, you know, yeah, it, 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 it's not going to be Shannon Sharp giving her it. It ain't going to have that to it. No, I, I don't think it will. But it is lucrative. I mean, I hope they are making good money off of it. Um, but I won't be listening or watching, you know. And it looked like all of y'all said hell to the no, hell to the no. Okay. <laughs> well, y'all said no. Y'all didn't say hell to the nah. <laughs> What's up, princess? Thank you. And happy uh, seven-month anniversary, by the way. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Uh, what story do I want to do next? I want to go ahead and do this Amanda Seal story. Because Amanda Seals has basically been blackballed in the industry. And people are wondering, you know, well, why has she been blackballed? You know, they don't like her speaking up. They don't like her. Um, well, more recently, I know it's been about the Palestine issue. She's been very vocal about that. And she said that, you know, different people didn't want to work with her anymore. But I mean, Amanda's always working. I will say that. She has her own podcast. Uh, she does, um, not. I don't want to say touring, but... Uh, Funny and Black, uh, she goes, yeah, it's like a tour, Funny and Black, it's like a comedy show. I would compare it to like Wildin' Out and stuff like that. And you always see Amanda Stills around, but it's like, like people don't like her. Remember she was on that show, The Real, and allegedly Lonnie Love did not like Amanda Stills. That's actually the only one that Amanda Stills doesn't talk to. She says she talks to all her other co-hosts, but uh, Lonnie Love, they don't get along. So this is what she posted on Instagram. You want to say something? If it wasn't for y'all, I would really... Put a one if you can hear it. If it wasn't for y'all, I would really think that I ain't doing shit. Because the industry I'm in does not recognize me. And to be clear, I'm speaking about the black spaces in the industry I'm in. Because y'all know I don't give two dams about any of these other spaces, but I'm, uh, the black spaces is what I'm referring to, which is largely in part why I have realized like I need to shift out of this industry. You know, like I don't get invited to Essence Women in Hollywood. I've never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. I've been, I've been nominated for an Image Award. Never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. 
never been honored at Black Girls Rock. Like, <laughs> I've hosted these events. You know what I'm saying? Um, I literally hosted the BET Awards in 2020 in my own house, and I was not invited to the BET Awards since. So I just want to thank y'all for always reminding me that I, I really am valuable because the game and the industry that I've been in has never let me know. So that was Amanda, everybody. That's what she said. She doesn't feel valuable. She's even been nominated for awards and haven't been invited to the show. And I remember doing uh, Koviana, she did host the show. And she, uh, she hosted the BET Awards. Remember, she did it from home. And I was like, damn, since then you haven't been invited? That's kind of weird, you know? Also, I think I I think just her, the way she goes about things, and I hate saying that she should be quiet and shut up and not say anything. That's not what I'm saying. But who did you piss off? Because I don't think y'all remember, but she was invited to, well, no, she wasn't invited to. There was a some kind of rap party for um, uh, Insecure, you know, the show with Issa Rae. And she wasn't invited to that. But there was another a party for the show originally. And she was not, she, she went there and then she said she got harassed and the security said she wasn't allowed. I'm trying to find that clip right now for you guys. But it's something, it's something about that. Something happened, and they basically blackballed her. And let me say insecure. Dang, I should have had that clip up. Okay, here we go. In case y'all even okay. Know, this is what happened. It was the black. It was the black Emmys party. Black Hollywood Emmy party last night with my homeboy Kendrick and my homegirl Kiki, and we were being escorted. We we're being entered into the party when the woman at the door, a white woman named Kiara, was like, "Stop! She can't go in. No, she's not on the list. She can't go in." Now, Kiki was walking in, they weren't stopping Kiki, um, and Kendrick was walking in, but I was targeted out and was like, she can't go in, she's not on the list. So Kendrick was like, I don't even understand what, what? and then, like, yeah, I don't know, it's been like this all night, it's just politics, I don't know. So I'm standing there just like, so I stand there waiting, and now I'm getting perturbed because there's just no reason like it, the shit is not popping like it's not like there's a crazy line outside like there, there, there's people spilling out from the inside like there's just no a reason for like me to be standing out here and being like told like no you can't go in um so then i was like you know what i don't know so i go to the curb and then another homeboy of mine is like what what do you mean they won't let you in he's like we're gonna fix that so now like 15 minutes later he comes gets me brings me back and was like she should be able to go in. And this same white woman, Kiara, is like, no, she cannot go in. She cannot go in. And it was in that moment that I realized, like, oh, this is, like, about me. Like, this is not... Now, in actuality, I should have took my ass home when I walked up to a black Hollywood party and a white woman was the gatekeeper because the optics of that let me know that whoever is in charge of this ain't really thinking on a bigger scale of things. And I don't like parties enough to begin with to even put myself in situations like that. But I was really hyped up because so many of my peoples were like, come through, come through, come through. People were in there, people that were coming, etc. So I really was just like, whatever, let me just... Now, why didn't she come through with her people? That's my question. Like, you definitely should have came through with the people that wanted you to show up because, yeah, they wasn't letting you in. And again, you have to remember, I'm not saying Amanda is a nobody, but I don't think she's at that level where, oh, yeah, that's Amanda Seals. I know her. I don't think she's at that level. Gung ho. Um, but nonetheless, I was still outside my ass at the Velvet Rope because this woman, Kiara, was just not having Amanda Seals end the party. Then Elijah Kelly comes out. And Elijah Kelly is like, why are you out here? <laughs> and I'm like, I, because this woman will not let me in. And he was like, what? Just just come in. Just come in. 
So I'm coming in, and she's like, no, no. And he was like, just go, just go. And I just went, and I was like, yeah, because I don't know why this woman is so set that I'm not entering this party. I go in the party, and I literally just go and stand by the bar. They always come over and like, what's up, Amanda? And I was just like, you know what? I don't even know what's going on. But for some reason, I am not being allowed in this party. So when Kiki and I got in, she had went one way, and I went the other way. And by the time she came back to the bar, she thought that just like I was talking to people in the party. No. A security guard was talking to me. Because a security guard was dispatched to come and remove me from the party. Yes. So I'm sitting there like, I'm not leaving this party until you tell me who is saying that I need to leave the party. He's like, all right, I'm going to find out. So he's looking, he's like talking on his phone, and then he's like, Vanessa. Vanessa is saying that you need to leave the party. Vanessa of the AMPR group. And I'm like, really? That doesn't surprise me. So I'm standing there talking to him. When Elijah Kelly comes up again and is like, what's going on? And I'm like, they're saying that I need to leave the party and I need to be escorted out by security. He's like, what? At that moment, the general manager of the event or of the venue comes up and is like, you need to leave. They need to escort you out. There's no discussion that needs to be had. I'm like, there is a discussion that needs to be had because there's no reason why. He's like, you're not on the list and you need to leave. You're not on the list. And I was like, fine, Vanessa. Fine, Vanessa. I would like to have a discussion with Vanessa because I need to understand what threat I pose to this party. There are several people who are in this party that are not on the list. Why am I being singled out? No, I don't need to discuss that with you. Two more security guards come up. And our good friend, Kiara, who comes up and says, no, I'm the one who said she needs to go. Kiara, I'm the one who said she needs to go. I'm the one. So I just want to reiterate for you one more time, as I was saying at this point out loud. So let me just get this straight. I am being escorted out of a black Hollywood party. The only one that happens for the Emmys. I am being escorted out because this white woman here says that I can't be in here. I just want to get that clear. And y'all saw me say that in real time on my Instagram. And they were like, yes, you need to go. So now I start walking out and I turn to the general manager who has been nasty since he walked up to me. And I was like, this is some bullshit. You doing wrong. And as I did this, his lackey, some white, some white boy walks, moves in and presses up against me and pushes me back. Y'all, it was about to be world star night. It was about to be. I'm not going to lie to you. Because I really am not here for being touched, especially by men who are trying to exert authority for no fucking reason. And expecting me to... Now, uh, there's a little bit more to that clip, but I just want to end it because basically that was the point. Let me go ahead and put me back on the screen. But here's my point. Why she talked about Elijah and who she was with. I forgot the last name and I'm not sure who that is. But anyway, why didn't they come grab her and be all like, hey, no, she she with us, she coming in this part, like escort her in. Uh like if I had a party and I seen Couture Bay outside, right? I see Couture Bay outside, and I'm all like, Couture Bay, come in. And she was like, they won't let me in. And I'll be like, why won't they let you in? They say I'm not on the list. And I'll be like, well. This, you know, this is a part, and she a part of my crew. She deserves to be here. I'm going to let her in. And I'm going to physically grab her and drag her in with me. Like, hey, like, she with me. You know, we're going to move in. Like, the fact that nobody did that and was all like, no, this woman is coming in because she deserves to be here speaks volumes. And I need Amanda to tell us who she pissed off. Because it's one thing... When, you know, uh, Hollywood, as far as, uh, let's just put it out there, white Hollywood wants to cancel you. But it seemed like black Hollywood wants to cancel you as well, too. So who did you piss off to where people want to, everybody wants to cancel you? Because I think at this point, I think she'd be more accepted in white Hollywood than she is in Black Hollywood, which is strange, right? Wh who and what did you do at this point? I know some of you guys in the comments were saying, like, it can't be everybody else at this point. It has to be her. And I like Amanda. I like some of her opinions, and not all, but some of her opinions. But I can tell that her, um, her disposition... Um, yeah, she can be Candace Owen. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're the same person. I, I, I would say I can see similarities, but um, her, her disposition and the way she comes off, I think it can be very standoffish. And like, if you don't agree with her, it's like the worst thing in the world. 
Like, I would not like to see her debate somebody. And the reason why is because I don't think it would be a productive conversation. I think it would just be like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Rather than it being like a back and forth. You know what I mean? So why is it always that every, you're not invited to these events or, you know, people don't like you. And mind you, this was, uh, when was this? This was a few years ago. Let me look at the year real quick. Uh, this was four years ago. Yeah, 2019. 2019. So this was before the panorama and all that. So whatever you've been having this reputation, uh, Issa Rae and the rest of the cast didn't invite you on cast trip. You know, Issa Rae, uh, I don't know if she still does, but she used to always post photos on yachts and stuff like that and on vacations. I never seen Amanda on any of those yachts, vacations, or nothing. It's crazy. Like, this woman is literally canceled, and she doesn't seem to know why, and we don't know why, but I don't know. But do you guys think that she should be invited to these events? Do you guys feel like she should be invited or no? Uh, because as far as acting, insecure is the only thing I can think of, and so maybe they just want it actors you know i know she does uh comedy but i wouldn't know her really for comedy uh jesse williams invited her i think yeah he's from Grey's anatomy right 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 uh what are the curves she got drunk and custom oh okay that's the now that's no more like it i can see that being the story right uh maybe she's not as big as she's a, that could be too and, you know, when you don't rub elbows with the right person and kiss a lot of ass, sometimes you don't get invited. It is what it is. So speaking of the NAACP Image Awards, I wanted to talk about this real quick. Because Queen Latifah hosted, right? And they did this little bit where they were talking about Black actresses getting, uh, you know, not being respected and not getting the right pay. Uh, Taraji was even a part of it, and Queen Latifah was all like, yeah, we work so hard, uh, stand up if you're a Black actress, and then she told everybody else to stand up and support um, the Black actresses when you see them, you know, getting treated wrong or mistreated, speak up and say something. Beautiful moment, right? Can't deny that. Beautiful moment. But what would have been even more beautiful is if all these years that Monique has been talking about this, and Monique has been saying this, they all supported Monique the same way. Now, you cannot like the messenger and you cannot like the delivery, but the message is still there. Because how many times are we gonna see Taraji P. Henson cry? I feel like since the color purple, every show I see Taraji on, she's been crying. Maybe not every show, but most of them, she's been crying. And then they also will bring this up. Thank you, Cammy. They will also bring up the whole pay discrepancy. Which, if you are an Oscar nominated or, or even an Oscar winner, you should be making more than somebody else. If your IMDb is over a hundred and something movies and TV shows, then yeah, you should be paid what you're worth. I agree with that. But when Monique was saying it, everybody just kept their mouth shut. Is it because it involved Tyler Perry and Oprah? Nobody wanted to speak up for her? And Oprah was the executive producer over the color purple. So if Oprah cared, she wouldn't had, um, <laughs> you would think Oprah being over it, things would have went right, right? 
everybody would have been paid fairly. Um, as we know, they all had to share a room together. Like, as far as, like, instead of everybody in their own, you know, trailer or room, they all had to share a room. They also had to drive themselves, and Taraji said, hey, why are we driving ourselves? That's a liability issue. Um, there's probably so many things that we don't know of that went wrong during that set, and it came out during that movie because, let's be honest, that movie should have been bigger than what it was. But all the controversy overshadowed that whole movie, talking about the color purple. And I think also, too, people didn't realize that it was a musical, so it was based off of the Broadway play and not the classic movie, you know, the color purple. So I think it was two things that kind of confused the audience. But anyway, the drama overshadowed the movie. And I'll be honest, I didn't watch the color purple. Did anybody watch the color purple? Uh, yes or no? Did you guys watch the, the new one? Not the old one, the new one. I know there's a little delay, so I'll do a 30-second countdown. Let me know if you guys watched it. Okay, there was more no's. Okay. What's up, Miss Nika? Yeah, there was more no's. Okay. Right, Karen, I'm just being honest. But if they had rallied behind Monique like they're doing to Raji P. Henson, maybe something could have been done. And now I know the other argument, and let me take their picture down real quick. The other argument is all like, okay, well, if people are not paying you right and they're not treating you right, then start your own. I, I do believe that. I do believe that. I mean, we see it through history. Why do you think there's a BET, a TV One? There's even the Double uh, ACP Awards, um, the BET Awards, uh, the um, Soul Train Awards. Like, yeah, we did have to go out and create our own award shows and TV shows and movies and so forth. But why does it have to be that way? Why do we have to create our own in order for us to get some kind of equality? That's like, you know, on YouTube, like, it, say if, well, uh, YouTube is going to be a different conversation for a different day because they do be on some BS. But... That's like saying, oh, well, if you're a black content creator, you should be, you should create your own platform. Okay, well, I need some money to create my own platform. So I got to stick on this one for the time being until I get the money to create my own platform. But why should I have to create my own platform? Now, if I want to, because I want to make sure the money comes to me and I want to make sure, you know, I create a fair platform, that's one thing. But why should I have to? I should be able to work within the fine lines. It's just kind of like... At jobs, you usually will leave a job when you're when the pay's not good or you're not treated well, and they a job that doesn't promote you or want to see your growth, you'll leave and go somewhere else. But hell, I've been putting in work and everything. You know, I've been meeting my stats and everything like that. Why should I have to? There's no reason why I can't move up within the company and stuff like that. You know, so it's like different things that. I agree, yeah, let's create our own, let's do our own thing. At the same time, you shouldn't have to. You should get you should get what you're worth. That's it. And so shout out to Monique. I know a lot of y'all don't like Monique, but shout out to her because she she always had a point. Uh Viola has been saying the same thing. Like, right. We're hearing it. It's like an echo chamber. It, like we've been hearing this, you know? It's it's not the first time. We heard it, but it's all like, oh, okay, well, now y'all want to speak about it. And I, I don't know. I just kind of felt indifferent about it. I'll say that. Okay. Let me do, uh, I'll do the Armand story. I'll do this one next. All right. So Armand went live on Instagram and he was with Al. They were at some kind of 
uh, function or something like that. Uh, uh, over, uh, well, the picture with Armand and Al, that's uh, Monifa. You know the one that said, do you really want to, do you really want to uh, eat a night? That's who that is. Okay. So they were all hanging out and they were at some kind of event. And I was just thinking, I was all like, yo, Al Reynolds needs to um, mentor Armand. And not maybe not necessarily like a mentor, like you need to be like me, but I feel like he needs to be around, around Al Reynolds. And the reason why I say that is because I feel that Al can put him in certain places and put him around people. Because when you think about it, Armand, I'm, let me just say this real quick. Let me just say this. Going to a Zeus Network event is not big. <laughs> and I'm not being shady or nothing. But I just feel like at a certain age, at a certain level, going to Zeus, uh, no, that's not good. But I feel like Al can kind of put him in those spaces. And I'm not even talking about Hollywood. I'm talking about, like, with the people with the money and stuff like that. You know? With the accountants. With, you know, rubbing shoulders with those kind of people. That's what I mean. And I think that would be a good look. And you could see the maturity and the evolution of Armand rather than, you know, hanging out with... In, 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 you know, but also, too, Armand has to be receptive and he has to be ready for that. Because let's be honest, Claudia is not going to introduce them in those spaces. And Claudia was at the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, Image Awards. And so was Al. But why wasn't Armand at the Image Awards? You would think, because now he's on Fox Soul, he would have been invited too. Now, maybe he was, I don't know. But... Armand, Al, and Claudia, they should have been sitting next to each other. They should have been promoting the show. Why weren't they all together at the award show? I see a lot of separatism, you know? Not a solid unit. Like, I'm going to do my thing, and then y'all do your thing. And it, and, it, and it looks like they're on teams now. It looks like they're on teams. Al Armand versus Claudia. And I don't want to make it a versus, but, you know, it, it's kind of looking like that. Because Claudia was in LA. Why wasn't Claudia with them hanging out? Drinking red Kool-Aid. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I said that because Al Riddle's tongue is red. Drinking red Kool-Aid. You know? I feel like Al will help Armand get into those spaces. Now, again, I don't want to say Armand and Claudia don't like each other. I don't know that to be true. I think it's just kind of like we're just co-workers and that's it. So Claudia is not going to be the one. But then you know what I was thinking about, y'all? Y'all know Claudia and Jason Lee are friends, right? Did y'all know that? Put a one in the chat if you knew that. Claudia and Jason Lee are friends. So I just have a feeling like it was never kind of going to work out anyway. As far as like being a friendship, working is one thing. But as far as being a friendship, ah, uh, nah. I think that, I think they wrapped up, Angela. Uh, the uh, college here, I think they wrapped up. Oh, Claudia and Conscious are buddies too. Oh, that that could be a play too. You know that that could definitely be a play too. I I could see that being like, oh well, you know, screw screw Armand. I I could see that too. Are they though? It could be a Hollywood thing. You're right, Afro. It could be a Hollywood thing where it's all like, yeah, we're quote unquote friends. Just because we might mingle with each other every now and then doesn't mean we're friends. But 
But anyway, like I said, I definitely think that this could be a good thing for Armand. I feel like he needs Al to mentor him. What do you guys think? Like, let me know. And y'all can let me know if y'all think that's wrong. Like, no, AT2, you don't know what you're talking about. He don't need to be mentored by Al. Let's do 30 seconds. Oh, let me take down the picture real quick. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, he needs to be uh, mentored by someone with a, with an actual... <laughs> Damn! Damn, princess! Let me put your comment up. I really don't care for either of them. Okay, okay. Armand hasn't been there long enough for uh, what you want. Okay, not sure. Armand is in his own lane. Okay, okay, okay. He don't want no mentor. Oh, you know what? I wasn't even trying to be shady, but I mean, okay, yeah. Yeah, the whole, um, when he talks about being a mentor, he's talking about Tasha K when he talks about that. You know what? I wasn't even trying to be shady like that, but um, no, no, you, you always can be mentored. It, it's not a bad thing. It's not like, oh, I need somebody to help me build a YouTube channel that like a mid, like nothing is wrong with having a mentor. Like usually somebody to guide you or, uh, or if you want to say somebody that, uh, console me, I can't, uh, uh not console me. If somebody to talk to or somebody to kind of help you along your way, you know, one of those kind of people, a mentor isn't a bad thing. I think mentor people think like oh somebody to like show you the ropes and do this like it's essentially yes but a mentor is not a bad thing so i want to go ahead and talk about the last story uh gilbert arenas and saucy santana for those of you who don't know gilbert got in trouble for talking about <laughs> well not talking about but laughing at saucy santana so he was talking with nick young and they were talking about how, oh, who are you on the, he, well, Arena said, asked, who are you on the show with? And so he was looking up the different cast. And so he looked up Saucy Santana. And he was like, wait, you was on the show with, with this? And he starts laughing, right? And people automatically assume like, oh, because Saucy Santana, who he is, he started laughing. He don't like gay people and all that stuff. But now kind of seeing Arena's response to it all like he was basically just taken aback like he was like oh whoa because the first thing that he had seen was a twerk video from saucy santana he was like whoa whoa you was you was with it like wait what's going on and you know and let's be honest and i think it's a fair conversation to have if you didn't know who a saucy santana was and the picture over on the right was your first you know your first glance at saucy santana you'd be like Wait, w w what is that? You know, like, honestly, you be like, wait, 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 what, what, what are you? Like, what, what is that? Because the beard, the lipstick, the nails, uh, the pink dress, you know, it would throw you off. Like, wait, wait, what, wait, what's going on here? Because it's not necessarily a woman, but it's a very feminine man. You know, so it would throw you off. And so that's where Gilbert was coming from. And I feel like it's honest to have a conversation. Like maybe he should have explained it, but he, uh, you know, originally in his first video, but it was just all like, whoa, wait, whoa, like what, what's that? Anybody would have that first response if they seen Saucy Santana just first glance. You know, anybody would have had that first like, whoa, like, Wait, who who's that? Now, Gilbert kind of explained a little bit further, and his response kind of, it didn't make the situation worse, but it made me question, like, okay, where is he going with stop. this? Stop. No, no, no. Stop. <laughs> stop. I'm not going to lie. 
<laughs> I'm not rolling, bro. No. no I mean, all I'm saying, if I had the if I had the rate between who's better, him. I'm trying to say it, him. Or Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> stop, stop, man. I don't no. know who I'm going to throw my dollars to, dog. <laughs> a good show is a good show. <laughs> uh, hey, a good show is a good show. Right? Hey, hey, Sauce. Hey, Sauce, listen. I got rules. You got, you, listen, you can't talk. <laughs> no, no. And you no. can't look at me. If no. you look, I got, I got hunted those. I got, listen, I got the honey. Where does money come from? I got, I got the honeys. Listen, so, hey, listen, I don't mind. I don't know if you dealt with it. <laughs> I don't know if, Nick, is that what you was doing, dog? I was like this. He was like this. I was leaving it. He was leaving it on dresser. Hey, Zossie, I'm being that like the yeah. Shake it, my nigga. Can you say that? Is that nah, stop. You can't do that. Nah, 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 hell no. Nah. What you doing with all this money, man? No, I'm saying, how do you supposed to? How do you supposed to get a lap dance from the dude nah, and you straight? You gotta sneak it to him. You gotta play too. <laughs> you gotta say, you see that right there? You see that? <laughs> you, see, you see that right there? <laughs> That's all you play up. No shade, though. I feel like, um. Bruh, trolling. I'm trolling too. It's all, uh, you know what I'm saying, kicks and giggles and shit. But that really be some real ass shit. And y'all gotta realize, this why when niggas be around gays and and, 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 and be acting weird, it's because they start having thoughts. They mind start motherfucking wondering. And now you saying like, well, I hear that. Niggas shake better than Mad Stallion. Shit, if I had to put it back in. He don't say nothing. Or maybe he got a wig on. I hit him from the back. What I really say. Niggas really be having thoughts, bitch. You got to really be secure in who the fuck you is. And, 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 and bottom line. So you see, bro, just joking about it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I, I would have just assumed he's straight. I don't know that I'm really about for real, for real. Now, I would hope it was just a joke. Because it's crazy to say that Saucy looked better than Megan Thee Stallion or Shake It. I, I don't care what you say. To me, that is crazy and that is wild. Now, I do believe Gilbert Arenas was trolling, but it, it was it was a bad troll. It, it, it was a very bad troll. And I'm all like, yeah, I don't know about that. Because to ever compare Megan to Saucy is just out of this world. You know, out of this world. A saucy jelly people. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, like a high school student, uh, what does it matter what he said about Saucy? He sounds so silly. It's ridiculous from a grown man. It, it's just, you know, it, it was just a weird conversation. All you had to do was really just say like, hey, I wasn't laughing at him because it, because he's gay, I was just shocked by that. That's all he had to say. And then when he was like, oh, how you give the money to a dude, you know, when you ask for a dance? And it's all like, uh, huh? Like, the conversation went somewhere totally left. And it was just weird, you know? It, it, it was just weird. And I think Saucy talking about how, you know, some men be thinking and maybe that's why. Um, he has a point. Have you guys ever... And it's usually men because I'm a man. But have you guys ever just met like someone who just all of a sudden just talks about gay people? Mind you, it's not like you've seen something on TV or something happened or it doesn't even make your mind even nothing happened to make that person mind even go there. But they just talk about gay people and how, you know, oh, I've seen this and then and like you just kind of like what like where like. We're over here, you know, talking about like French toast and you talking about gay. Like, what does that have now? I will say those people kind of made me think like, okay, it's something you insecure about because your mind is thinking about something that we're not even thinking about. Uh, thinking about that pussy. <laughs> right. You're thinking about pussy and. We're not even talking about that or even trying to think about that. And, like, why is your mind going there all of a sudden? Now, when Saucy was talking about that, yeah, I totally agree. But I don't think nobody look at Saucy and be like, ooh, if, if, if he just put on a wig and just didn't say nothing. And no, because still Saucy looked like Saucy saying that the beard, the, the, the misshaped body, the BBL, 
it's all a little confusing. Like it, 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 it don't turn me on at least. Now maybe Gilbert Arenas to turn him on, but it ain't turning me on. So I ain't getting confused. Nothing. So I say that all to say I think they both were just trolling or whatever and just having fun with it. But um. Yeah, it kind of had it like when he was going into detail about, oh, I just like the money to the dudes and stuff. I was like, uh, yeah, this conversation is getting a little weird. But anyway, y'all, uh, that's the end of the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you have. Oh no, can you guys still see me? Put a one if you guys can still see me. Dang, the the, the internet is see, okay, you can you, you can, okay. All right, I think it's time to end the <laughs> Yo, my internet ended the show for me. It was like, yeah, get your ass up out of here. You know you only do an hour. All right, y'all. Love y'all, deuces, and make sure by the end of the before the day ends. You tell somebody you love them, okay? Deuces, y'all. But we out.